Well, spring is in the air, and as most of the baseball fans know, the Chicago Cubs are doing their spring training out here, out on Catalina Island. And so, to please you fans who want to know what's going on, we've brought to our program tonight a gentleman who's long been a mainstay of the Chicago Cubs, the dean of the Major League Catchers, Mr. Gabby Hartnett. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. Thanks, everybody. It's great to have you here, because I've been hearing some rumors that I want you to correct for me. Yeah? Yeah. I understand that some folks are trying to start propaganda to the effect that the National League is washed up. Now, wait a minute. Well, don't get me wrong, Gabby. I don't believe it either. But I just wanted to get your slant on it. Sorry, pal. But when I hear that rumor, I wish I had a ball bat in my hand. <laughs> the National League washed up. Did you see what we did to the White Sox right here in Los Angeles on Tuesday and Wednesday? Well, well, I know you Cubs have been a little rough on them. Yes, and that's only the beginning. I'll admit the National League has had a lot of tough luck in the last few seasons. In some ways, the Giants didn't look too good against the Yanks in the World Series last year. But that don't mean a thing. The Nationals are fundamentally sound. Is that it, Gabby? You bet your bottom dollar they are, Mr. Wilson. Now, tell me something. How did you ever get the name of Gabby? Well, Mr. Wilson, you won't believe this, but I get the name for just the opposite reason. When I left home as a kid, I came from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. No crack. <laughs> My dad said to me, Charlie, the only advice I can give you... Now that you are leaving home, if you keep your ears open and your mouth shut. So you did it? Sure. I was the quietest fellow you've ever seen. Finally, newspaper men started kidding me about it and calling me Gabby, just because I didn't hardly talk. Well, the name stuck, and all of a sudden I started living up to it. I haven't stopped talking since. Say, <laughs> <They were>, uh... <laughs> Just a minute, what's going on around here anyway? I'm master of ceremonies, and I think I should be introducing the people. Get this man out of here. I've got a program to put on. <laughs> I, uh, I'm expecting a baseball player. Well, thanks. I, this yeah. is Gabby Hartnett. Well, I've never heard of the... Oh, oh Gabby Hartnett. Well, that's different. How are you, Mr. Hartnett? Fine, thanks, Mr. Morgan. Well, it's good to see you. Uh, Wilson, who is this man? <laughs> I just told you, Frank. This uh, is Gabby Hartnett, the catcher for the Chicago Cubs. They're in spring training over on the island. Oh, well, of course, the island. <laughs> oh, Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a uh, baseball there, too? <laughs> How did you get away? <laughs> Catalina Island, Mr. Morgan. Oh, well, I'm glad you're out anyway. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you interested in baseball? You're interested? I love it. I used to pitch on a team at Vassar. At Vassar. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, Vassar is a girl's school. Yes, I found that out. Uh, <laughs> but my real baseball career began when I joined the Baltimore Orioles. That was a great team, Mr. Morgan. Yeah. What position did you play? Well, I was sort of a roving infield man. <laughs> I, uh, I had a terrific speed in those days, of course, and sometimes I used to pitch and catch at the same time. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Morgan. How could you pitch and catch at the same time? Well, I was very fast. I'd throw the ball and then run to the plate and catch it. You must have been fast all right. Oh, I was, my boy. Only once did I have any trouble. I, uh, I put a little too much zing on the ball and hit myself in the back of the head. <laughs> I suppose you had a little trouble getting out to left field when somebody hit one. Oh, they never hit him, but hitting. Now, that was my real specialty. I was one of the greatest pinch hitters of my day. Now, look, Frank, if you were so good, why did you ever quit baseball? Well, that was a little incident, Mary. This didn't mean a thing, but it finished me. It was the night before the big game. I, uh, I was having trouble with my glasses. Your glasses? Uh, yes, I had too many of them. <laughs> uh, I, I... <laughs> I mean, I was being fitted with new glasses. They put drops in my eyes, so naturally the next day my vision was none too clear. Oh, well, I... you were seeing double, eh? Yeah, triple. <laughs> <laughs> All these were very powerful drops, sherry and Angostura. <laughs> so, uh, so the manager was trying to save me for the crucial moment, and finally, in the ninth inning, it arrived. We were one run behind, the bases were loaded, and they sent me in to pinch hit. What a spot. Well, sir, the pitch wound up, and zing, I saw three balls whiz past me. I turned to the manager, and I said, Joe, what can I do? I'm seeing three balls. What did he say? Well, he said, don't worry, Frank, just hit the one in the middle. <laughs> So the next one I looked over carefully. I wanted to get a good line on the middle ball. Well, it was two strikes on me. The pitch wound up, and those three balls came at me again. Wham! I swung at the middle ball. Did you connect? Yes, but I hit it with the wrong bat. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so long, boys. i got to make a phone call. I'll be back in a minute. Don't go away. <laughs> well, Gabby, you certainly did well with our audience. 
Why not? I've got the whole Cub team sitting out in front. <laughs> well, anyway, it was nice of you to come up here and clown with us, and lots of luck to you and the Cubs all season. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. Tonight, we're going to pay a quick visit to a typical American home. Well, let's call it the house next door. It's evening, and two couples, close friends, have just finished a rubber of bridge. Time for refreshments, and the two girls are out in the kitchen. Darling, would you mind making the coffee? Well, of course not. Where? Oh, here, I've got it. Oh, dear. I do hope the coffee turns out well. I know Tom's so particular about coffee. I'm careful as can be, but it does seem to vary so. I mean, the coffee I make. Well, it wouldn't, dear, if you'd use the same coffee right along. Oh, I know you use the same brand of coffee, but that's not the same thing. Why, Grace, what do you mean? I mean, I was having the same trouble as you till I changed to Maxwell House coffee. One day I spoke to my grocer and he said... I understand, Mr. Smith. Well, of course, I can't guarantee uniformity in the coffee you make when you use one packed in an ordinary container. You see, ground coffee packed this way is constantly losing its strength and flavor, not only daily, but hourly. So naturally, it can't help but vary in freshness, pound by pound. Why don't you try Maxwell House? This can, they call it the super vacuum can, keeps the coffee roaster fresh, so it's always the same in strength and flavor, always uniform. Of course, that's true. That's why women who use Maxwell House will find they make a uniformly good cup of coffee. When they buy Maxwell House, they're assured of roaster fresh coffee. Coffee always full flavored. So let me suggest, if you've been having trouble making uniformly good coffee, try Maxwell House. You should find that it'll help you. And here's something else that'll interest you. Maxwell House coffee is now packed in both one and two pound super vacuum cans. Thrifty housewives everywhere who use lots of coffee are discovering the convenience and added economy in buying the two pound can. Well, that's that. And now I think I'll tell a little anecdote. Now, wait a minute I... here, Frank. I'm telling the anecdote. Well, in fact, I've been laboring over some witticisms the last few days. You have? Sure, and believe me, I picked up some beauties over the weekend. <laughs> well, I didn't do bad either, but say, how do you square it with a wife? Uh, I, I know, you mean jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean jokes. Now, step away from the microphone. I'm in charge. Now, please. listen, Meredith, you can't take that microphone away from me. I've waited too many weeks for this opportunity. What for, <laughs> to be a master of ceremony? No, it's just that I have a girl in Long Beach, and she has no telephone. <laughs> a cute number, though, demure in a risque sort of a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your idea? Do you want to talk to her over the mic? Sure, I've wanted to talk to her every week, but I didn't want to do it in front of Taylor. <laughs> you know him, Meredith. I can't understand. As long as Taylor's around, the girls never notice me. But the minute he leaves, they ignore me. What, is he, what has he got that makes me so repulsive? <laughs> well, nevertheless, Frank, I don't think you ought to take up the time of the program with your personal messages. Wilson, have you no, no feeling for l'amour? Dorothy or toujours? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the band seems to like it. I'm going to talk to my girl. No. Have you no soul, you heel? Excuse me, Miss Morgan. Who are you? I'm with the broadcasting company, and I must inform you there's a federal law against personal communications on network programs. Well, now, let me get this straight, son. You mean I can't talk over the microphone to my girl, Miss Anemia Nozzle, who lives at 445 Hobart Circle, Long Beach? Mr. Morgan, you must not communicate with Miss Nozzle. I can't even make an appointment with her for this evening? No, sir. Do you mean to tell me it's against the law just for me to say, Anemia, I'll meet you at 4th and Main right after the program? That's what I mean to say. Well, all right, the law's the law. <laughs> but I'll be there. The season's biggest song hit, Hippie Tim. Feeling any other feeling, she was satisfied. 